What is up guys? Welcome to another video on my channel here Liciously. I hope all of you guys have been doing great. So a few days ago I was actually reading an article regarding an interesting topic regarding hair loss treatment using a drug that was intended for treatment of osteoporosis. Now osteoporosis is a disease that weakens the bones and at first when I saw this article I was thinking that you know it's just going to be any like any other article where it's all hype and nothing's really going to be done about it. I did read further into it and I did realize that they actually started using actual human hair follicles. Now this is a big plus because a lot of the research uh, when it comes to hair loss treatments are revolved around different types of mammals or rats or mice and not a lot of actual human hair uh, stem cells are actually being used when it comes to these research. So. I decided that I might as well take a look at it and a lot of you guys have been requesting me to do a video on this so I will be talking about what this drug really is. So researchers from the University of Manchester Center for Dermatology Research showed that the osteoporosis drug called Way 316606 um, I'm not sure what it stands for but it had a dramatic stimulatory effect on human hair growth uh, hair follicles that were donated by 40 people who had undergone hair transplants. And for those who have actually been following my channel, we only have two FDA approved hair loss medications in the US. We have minoxidil with its brand name Rogaine and then we also have uh, finasteride also known as Propecia. Now these two medications, uh, particularly finasteride, come with unwanted side effects. We have people suffering from sexual dysfunction, low libido, issues when it comes to getting an erection. So. A lot of these issues kind of, you know, push away people from using these hair loss medications and a lot of the times people do suffer from a lot of side effects and aside from side effects, the results might not be as satisfactory as people want them to be. We also have the other option of getting hair transplants where people, you know, extract the follicles from the back of the scalp, either through FUE or an FUT, and then they would implant the hair grafts into the areas where you're actually receding or balding. Patients still need to do something about hair loss prevention because just because you got a hair transplant does not mean that the areas behind the hairline or whatever areas where you did not get a hair transplant is not going to be affected by male pattern baldness. And as a result, researchers sought to develop new ways to promote hair growth with the hope of finding novel, well-tolerated agents for treating male pattern baldness. So the approach was to first identify the molecular mechanisms of an old uh, immunosuppressive drug known as cyclosporin A, also known as CSA. And this drug has been commonly used back in the 1980s that suppresses organ transplant rejection and other types of autoimmune diseases. However, the drug has very unwanted side effects, some of which can actually increase the risks of getting cancer. But another side effect that we were particularly interested in was the fact that it enhances cosmetically unwanted hair growth. This is actually good news for people who are balding. Um, you know, anytime we hear about different types of medications that can actually cause or stimulate hair growth. We want to find out more about it and see what we can do with it. Research pretty much found out that cyclosporin prolongs active hair growth, which is the antigen phase of the hair cycle, in organ cultured human scalp hair follicles. So the research team carried out a full gene expression analysis of isolated human scalp hair follicles treated with CSA called SFRP1, which is responsible for blocking the protein called the WINT pathway and hindering hair growth. So the WINT signaling pathways are absolutely critical when it comes to hair growth because they pretty much pass signals to the cells and it tells the cells what to do. So it's kind of like an information delivery system and it's crucial when it comes to the maintenance of hair growth and it's actually very crucial when it comes to the maintenance of hair follicle stem cells through their entire life cycle during the resting or the telogen phase. And because of the wind signaling pathways, hair follicle stem cells can retain their ability to renew while refraining from actually doing so during the resting phase. So this kind of explains why cyclosporin actually induces unwanted hair growth in patients because it removes the inbuilt and potent molecular break on human hair regrowth and prolongs active hair growth. And the inhibitory mechanisms for this new drug is completely unrelated to CSA's immunosuppressive activities, making SFRP1 a new and highly promising therapeutic target for anti-hair loss strategies. Way 316606 targets the same mechanisms as CSA by specifically antagonizing SFRP1. And we also know that the external applications of Way 316606 may promote hair growth to the same 
magnitude as CSA or even better, but without the unwanted side effects because Way 316606 is a non-immunosuppressive, chemically unrelated agent other than cyclosporin. A clinical trial is obviously going to be required to check for the efficacy and the safety of using this type of medication on hair loss patients. But I've heard also a lot of things that it's going to have to be some type of external uh, or topical medication such as lotion or a shampoo. I'm very optimistic if they can actually isolate the antagonizing SFRP1, which as we know prevents the wind signal which can cause hair loss. So if they can isolate that successfully in humans, then I feel that this medication would be a superior form um, on top of the current medications that we have. So we can let go of minoxidil or finasteride and then we can go ahead and start using Wade 316606. Anyway guys, if you guys are interested in a more scientific article uh, talking about this in detail, I'm going to be leaving the, the actual scientific research article in the description box below for you to take a look. And let me know what you guys think about this whole topic and you know this whole uh, hair loss medication. And make sure to leave me some comments so that we can actually start a conversation going. But once again, thanks for watching guys and make sure to subscribe, like this video, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Take care.